A very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on the Friday edition of the show. It's the last one for the week. We promise to make it worth your while. From the city of Lagos, right here in Nigeria, Yemi Adebayo. Always a delight to have you join us to talk sports right here in London. Mustin Okonapa and Yemi, it's all about the 2022 Women's Africa Cup of Nations. Uh, the Super Falcons, you know, got some relief yesterday after beating Botswana. There's still more to talk about. Yeah, still so very much uh, to talk about. We have uh, an interview lined up for you. Hopefully, uh, the Super Falcons legend will come true for us. I won't. I uh, mm -hmm. don't want to let it cut out of the bag just yet. So just, you need to sit back and relax and, you know, check out what we have on offer on the show tonight. And also, we will be talking about the Grand Slam tournament currently uh, going on. Novak Djokovic had to battle against Cameron Nori and the crowd and also fight back from the set down. We'll talk about that as we move on. And we'll also preview Saturday's final, the two ladies in the final. No one would have predicted that we'll have have those two in the final. We'll talk about it as we go on on the show. We will also talk about the Nigeria Professional Football League and, of course, the news yeah. uh, that give us joy uh, when uh, what the World Athletics, uh, of course, uh, confirmed that Nigeria's 4x100 women's relay team will be part of the World Athletic Championship in Oregon, United States, uh, is a team of joy. And I'm very sure you want to know the reason why uh, we're going to be there, despite the fact that they told us Blessing Okagbare's ban will affect that team. Again, you need to sit back and relax, and we break it all down for you. So, uh, Austin, we have to start with what you talked about, which is uh, the Super Falcons. Yesterday, they crossed the line, got the job done, and well, it's good that we cannot begin to pick the pieces. That's right. It was a win or win encounter for uh, the nine-time African champions, the Super Falcons, after that. You said it wasn't a shocking start against South Africa. It was just one that was laced with disappointment. But they needed to pick themselves back up. Botswana gave a good account of themselves. And we know, remember, Yami, we were on the live show when that match was being played. And we said for them to survive... When they get into second half, they must show their superiority. And right into the second half, they got the second goal. And, and that, to an extent, you know, just made things look a bit easy. Shout out to the Botswana goalkeeper also at some point. That was the first goal scored by Fama Onumonu. Uh, fine finish for to, to get a fourth goal for Nigeria. And you, you see what it meant to them because you can tell that uh, the Super Falcons were already under pressure, you know. They needed to, to do something. And when that goal came, it was good relief for them. And they went on to score the second at the start of the second half and then went on to win. The Botswana goalkeeper at some point, you know, came through with some good, you know, saves to, to you know, not make it look more than two. Pumping header right there for the second. I love it so much. So, hopefully we're going to get Super, if Super Falcons legend to join us, you know, talk some more. She's on the road, but we just needed to get quality into the show because we talk about women's football in Africa. In fact, the next in the world because she's she's still doing so much more right than the United States of America. FIFA consults her a lot of times, you know, for the development of women's football. So we, we just want to understand. Yeah, I mean, you and I can just only speak as pundits. Even if we played football, we're not women. So we we'll give a woman the opportunity to break it down for us so that how we can put, you know, some real perspective into it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's true. Uh, I was about just about to comment that uh, football looks really good when you're playing on a good pitch. I mean, your, your players look more skillful and, and all that. I, I'm looking at the pictures. It looks pleasing to the eye, and it's the same players you see uh, every day. Let's just quickly bring Alfred Okolegbe uh, into the show tonight. Greetings to you, Alfred. Thanks for finding out time to be with us on the show tonight. Good evening, Yami. Good evening, Austin. I'm delighted to be here. Um, starting with the women's national team, the Super Falcons. I think um, the girls are growing in confidence, and it's good that um, they just bounced back from that uh, disappointment against South Africa. They needed, so they needed to make a statement. Yeah, he ended two goals to nail. For some, he, he didn't create enough chances, but hey, what is important at this point is to make progress, and the girls duly obliged us to those two goals. Um, some inspired changes, but we have asked them, if we have that quality on the bench, why, did, why didn't that quality start um, at the issue? I think the Super Falcons are going through a phase. 
Um, we saw the likes of um, Kogane pulled out, um, um, Rita Chikolo Abantu as a caller pulled out some old legs, don't give him way. I think the kind of pressure that the South Africans put, um, uh, put on the uh, Super Falcons was that uh, we lost that game and we lost as Sato Shola. For some, um, it was looking um, dark and gloom, but they made a statement yesterday, and I think. From uh, from here, they can only make progress because confidence is growing. At the later part of that game, they begin to pass the ball better. Yeah. They were doing the who and the who and the as and the I mean, confidence can only grow from here. Uh, my worry is that Coach Randy Wardrum seemed not to really have a hand on it to make a statement with the team in terms of selection, deployment of manpower, yeah. and of course, having the best players, uh, the best options each time to play. That's just my worry. But um, right. I mean, it's good selling uh, with three points in the bag. Um, I I'm sure that one or two teams are uh, given that the third best, two best uh, uh, third place teams in two of the groups will qualify for the next year. So um, three points put in a good set. Yeah. Now you have your destiny family in your hands and decide what to do with it in the match against Burundi. All right, Alfred, um, let, let's backtrack a little because we, we've not spoken since the last time uh, Bayana Bayana uh, beat us. And, and I really want to ask you, because a lot of opinions out there, so I'd love to get yours. South Africa beat us. In your opinion, has power changed hands or is just a blip? I think, it's, I think it has. Um, uh, in terms of um, the consistency of results, somebody said... We're beating at um, uh, at home, a new, um, away, a neutral ground. I mean, if the result is three games on a row, these South Africans get the point. We shouldn't just delude ourselves that um, perhaps it's just uh, perhaps maybe one or two players were not in the lineup. I think the South Africans are making a statement with their women's football. They showed. What, um, in terms of capacity, in terms of support from the home front, can do to the fortunes of uh, the game? I mean, if you support the women's game, like they say, you so if you support women, you support the nation because these are people who can really, that the kind of support they are given, um, use it. Their life is, they play this football as if their life depends on it. And uh, for us here, yeah, you ask yourself, what is the measure of support that we're giving to our national team? What kind of growth? Do we have in our national team set up? The, uh, the clubs, are they coming through? I mean, if you want to look at the records that we have, Mamalali Sundowns won the inaugural edition of the Women's Champions League. That's a huge statement. Uh, we used to pride ourselves on the best of the continent, but uh, you have to look at the trajectory that we're, the clubs, are they doing, are they doing any better? Um, the national team set up, what do we have? Now, presently, the reality on ground is that the players that we have in our local league are not good enough for our senior national team. I don't think that's the way to go. I don't think that's the direction. We, we, we some of us have uh, cried, um, somebody like Monday give the MVP, um, highest goal scorer in a league that just ended. She'll have a starting place in the national team. But the national team think otherwise. They think she's good enough for the bench and play from, play from the bench and all of that. So, I, I mean, there's a disconnect between what we are doing locally and the kind of thing that we have in the national team. So, the South Africans have shown that um, if we proper planning with the right support, with yeah. sponsorship, with consistency, the results will come. And until we start doing those things in this climate, it will become very difficult. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so, uh, Austin, the floor is yours. Um, we, we, we've talked about all of these things. We've gone back and forth. There's this discussion about whether or not power has changed out, whether or not it's a bleep. And uh, the, the best uh, answer most people are giving is that, look, South Africa definitely reaping the rewards of years of planning, years of putting a lot of work into it. Time will tell whether power has really changed hands, but definitely South Africa is a force to reckon with. All day, every day. I mean, I totally agree with you. And, and interestingly, they looked at the Nigerian model to start building and gradually, they, I think they've caught her, but we just hope that they don't overtake. Let's go to Virginia in the United States of America. Super Falcons legend. We talk about women's football in Africa and to an extent the world. We talk about women's football. She needs so much respect. Let's welcome Messi Akide Udo. Messi, Akide Udo, good to have you on sports tonight. 
Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me. Awesome, awesome. Let's let me begin this way. Just before uh, the WAFCON and the first game between Nigeria and South Africa, you wrote an interesting, to an excellent, inspiring letter to the Super Falcons. Did you see anything happening in the opening game and you decided to pump it up? Talk to me. <laughs> no, it's from the previous games that they've uh, had encounter with South Africa. You know, it's been downside. And the it girls need uh, somebody that have been there before, done it before, you know, to give them encouragement. Because I know... 1998, uh, we were um, 2000. We, we, our backside was on the wall, and that was uh, Samokodo's time. Uh, Ghana beat us during the uh, uh, group stage, and uh, we came back and we won it. Um, and uh, I just feel like uh, South Africa right now, to say the honest truth, they are the more dominant team in Africa. Mm. They are the best in Africa right now. Um, mm. seeing the way they are playing and the way they carry themselves. Um, I know my big uncle was talking about um, Sunday Moldy, uh, Sunday, um, uh, what's her name? Sunday, Monday, um, Monday, Monday Gift, uh, Monday mm. gift um, cannot break through into the game. Um, I started from the Nigerian League. She's the mm. highest goal scorer. I was the highest goal scorer in my playing days from Nigeria. And uh, mm. she's hungry. And that's the thing that I'm saying. When you have all these superstars, they think that they are there. When you're playing outside the country and you are playing at home, you want to make a statement. When you sure. have players around her, because she has the ability to finish, because and the speed, you play players that are around her, she will have success. Um, mm. Me coming into the national team, I was young. I was the highest goal scorer of the league. And I came in. Um, Coach Mabo and uh, Polamity may so rest in peace. They surround me with a group of girls that can help me achieve my, my, my aim because I can score. And I'm very, I'm hungry. I'm, I'm very spicy. You know, she's very spicy. She can take risks. Those are the yeah. kind of players that we want to play up front. I'm a forward yeah. and I've been watching the game. And when mm -hmm. we have players that they are playing in Europe, in Europe, nobody will come and tackle you. African football is different from when you are playing for your club side. Everybody knows that if you go in a hard tackle, you will get somebody injured. So they, they know how to play. When you come to African football, it's different. Look at the South Africans. How many professionals do they have? Look at our bench. We All our bench is full with profession, professionals. What are we getting out of it? We said our league is the best league in Africa. Why can't we produce players from that, from that region and put mm. them in the national team? So it means that there is something that we are doing with our league that is not right. If we're going to have players that are playing, we should go in there and fetch them out. That's what I'm saying. That's right. And just to set the record straight, Alfred Okoligwe was actually speaking for Monday Gift. He loves the local league. So he was saying that it's time we look into the local league and get more players from there into the Super Falcons. Oh, oh, Alfred, yes, I'm sorry if I... No, 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 yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get... <laughs> because I'm yeah. dying, because... I know, I know. So, <laughs> so I said, let me, let me just redeem your brother, you know. So, Messi, let's, let's go back to that first game against South Africa. Uh, you, you, you played the game. Now you're a coach. So you understand this football business 360 degrees. What didn't work for the Super Falcons on that day? What did not work for them on that first game is that when Oshola, she's one of the favorite players on the team, she's carrying too much weight on her shoulder. She wants to do everything. To, she wants to do the best for the, for, the, for the team. She wants to do the best for herself. She wants to do the best for her country. But when it's not working, this is where the coach comes in and helps her. That kid has been sitting down since give and take six months. She's been injured. You don't, you don't start a player, or if you start her, like what I was saying to my husband, if you start a player because you respect her and the game, give a few minutes. Don't overuse her. After that tackle, if I'm the coach, I will take her out right away. But now she's going to start from square one and start healing again. And what good does it do for, for us? 
God forbid if she doesn't come back before the World Cup. What are we going to do? You know, so we, we, when we are playing players, we should please look at the contribution they are giving at that given time. Because everybody wants results. But if it's not working, there are players on the bench. At the point I was asking, did they tell us not to sub? Because <laughs> they were tired. Yeah, I was, I yeah. was asking. Did yeah. they tell the coach not to sub? We need sub. Mm. We need fresh mm. legs to come in. Those are things that, when, as a coach, when you're watching, you don't get attached to the emotion of what is happening. You look ahead what is going to benefit your team. And I think that we are still lacking that. You know, you read the game, and I think we are still, you know, coming slowly. I understand the coach is my friend, but African football is different. You know, African football and our system is different. He's trying to get to know all of these kids, but I will, I will advise him, I hope he's going to listen, to go into the Nigerian football um, um, competition and scout players there. Players are hungry to play. These girls want to be in the national team. You will see the competition out of these ones playing outside because they, they think that they got it all. We want results. Where is South Africa coming from? Now they are the most dominant team in Africa. And I have to give it to them. My friend yeah. Desiree has been doing a great job. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go Thanks, to Paul. Lagos. My colleague, yeah, we are the by standing by, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks, Mason, once again for uh, joining us. Uh, we appreciate the fact that you took time out uh, to be with us. Uh, listening to you, I, I'm tempted to ask, uh, you, you've said like twice, listening to you now, it appears like South Africa are the most dominant team, uh, women's football in Africa now. So uh, from a fan's perspective, should we now start ac accepting that, look, these guys may actually be better than us? For the record right now, they are three and a half. And we are half right now with the competition that they've played. Um, last half, half on, you know, I would call that a tie and that's why I gave Nigeria half. PK can go either way. Every time we've, we've met with South Africa, they've beaten us, you know. So for me, I will give it to them right now. They are the African um, champions in, in Africa. They are holding the continent right now and the way they are playing. Why do you think the, the players, you, you talked about hunger. Why does it seem like there's complacency now setting it, setting in? What do you think is, is the reason? Uh, these girls have won a lot, and I think that should motivate them to want to win more. But it appears like you're touching on hunger, the desire probably not there. Why do you think that's the case? The desire is not there because when, when, you, when you come for a national camp, and I know some of them, it's not their fault, when you, are, when you are getting ready for a bigger tournament like this, because AFCON is a bigger tournament for us in Africa. You don't come to camp two weeks. You don't come to camp a week before. You know, you start preparing these kids six months ahead of time. I know they are playing friendly games here and there which we didn't have, that's not in our case, that's not my case, my problem right now, but they have to be together because they are all playing in different clubs, under different coaches, under different formats. So when, we, when you, they come back home and they are playing with the, the coach that they have, they should be in the camp at least nothing less than six months to get them ready. Uh, I see. Um, Messi, I, I want to keep you um, because we go on break in one minute. I want to keep you. We'll go on that break and then we'll come back. We'll continue this conversation because I know what we went through to get you on the show tonight. So we're not letting you go. It's sports tonight on channels television. You can be part of the show. We've got Super Falcons legend Messi Akide Udo with us on the program. And we're talking about the 2022 Women's Africa Cup of Nations taking place in Morocco. She has said it that South Africa. They are the team at the, at the moment that they have done everything they need to do and are dominating Africa. If you love women's football, let's hear from you on Twitter, channels underscore sports. Let's go on this quick break now. When we come back, at the last edition, even after losing to South Africa, I was confident that the Super Falcons can go on to win. 
Is Messi confident that after losing to South Africa, that they can win this time around? We'll let you know, so don't go anywhere. Stay. Welcome back, Sports Tonight, to your award-winning sports loving channels television. We're showing so much love to women's football in Africa. It's the Women's Africa Cup of Nations taking place in Morocco, the Super Falcons. They are nine-time African champions. Don't touch them. They've dominated this competition. The likes of South Africa, Morocco, uh, Cameroon, to an extent, even Tunisia and, and small Botswana beginning to flex muscles. And that's what you get when, you know, you don't do the right things to sustain success. So uh, let's take a look at some live results from the Women's Africa Cup of Nations. We still have Super Falcons legend Messi Akide Udo with us on the show. So that's it right there, Group A results from the WAFCON, Burkina Faso. It's looking like it's end of the road for them because they lost their first two matches and now they are down by a single goal to Uganda. And I look at Morocco and Senegal. I was just talking about teams that are beginning to show prospects and promise. I think I should put Senegal into that list also. So let's go back to Messi. Akide Udo, she's right there in Virginia in the United States of America. Messi, I mean, let me go back to that question that I asked before I went on the break. In 2018, when the Super Falcons lost by a single goal to South Africa on live TV, I said they would still go on to win. And they did. They went on to win that Africa Cup of Nations in Ghana. They have lost 2-1 to South Africa in Morocco Messi Akide Udo, are you still confident that our darling Super Falcons can go all the way and win this title for a record 10th time? Yes, I still have the confidence in them because we've done it over and over and over again. I know they are having downside. They have a new coach. They are trying to find their feet. They are trying to know each other. They are trying to put everything together, uh, uh, the coach, and also the players, because the chemistry, you can see that the chemistry, they are trying to beat chemistry even on and off the field. So, but I believe that the competition goes on. That's my team. And I'm die fan of the Super Falcons. I will continue to support them no matter what happens. And that's what I told them in my letter. No matter what is going on, you don't listen. You just go there and get it done. And I still believe as the competition goes, they are going to bring the glory home. The number 10, I have told them they should remember. That was my last number I played. <laughs> so that's a very significant number. They have to bring that number home. And, and, and I'm praying for them. I am going to be behind them. I'm going to continue to cheer for them. I'm going to continue to be an advocate for them. And pray that God going to continue to strengthen them and bring that trophy home. Amen. I know you were going to land with a prayer. <laughs> Thank you so much, Messi Akide Udo, for your time on the show. I love your passion for the Super Falcons. Keep it going. All the best. And thank you so, so much. Thank you. I really appreciate you having me. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. That's it. Super Falcons legend, Messi. Akide Udo talking to us about the Super Falcons and their campaign to win a record 10th Africa Women's Cup of Nations title, the La Decima. And they've said, come and support us, be behind us as they go for 10. Uh, but it's going to take a lot of hard, smart, and determined work because it, they are the team to beat. I mean, when team sees the Super Falcons now, and they double their efforts because they are indeed the team to be. Let's go to Alfred Okoligwe. Alfred, Messi Akide said a lot of things. Uh, which of them really got to you that you want to respond to? I, I think I just like her passion for, for the game. This is a team that she invested her youth, um, everything she had. She became one of the best of the continent. Um, uh, her set, when it comes to uh, the progress that we made in the World Cup, they, we were the first set to make it to as far as the quarterfinals of the World Cup which is, um, um, which is um, something that they have to really, really be proud of. Um, she's a household name in, in, in the game. And when she speaks, it's something that, I mean, people listen. And um, uh, for me, I just, just re-echoing what I, what I said earlier about um, the, our growth uh, trajectory, what we've been doing with the local league, where the Super Eagles, I call it the Super Eagles syndrome, 
seem to have caught up with our, with our women. Time passed when we had the women who slug it out on the local front. Now everybody, the, the, in fact, the resume, the resume of our Super Falcon players, the, what's it called, the commentators just feast on it. Um, this one from the United States of America, born and bred in the United States of America. This one plays for Atletico. You start asking yourself, Ah, from where? This is what we're talking about here. But it's all good. Uh, I mean, uh, the most important thing for the girls to do is to, to after it fall, get up and dust themselves and keep trudging. I liked what I saw yesterday, but um, consistency at this point is key because um, the margin of error, um, there's no margin for error. It's all around. Unlike in the past, where when you finish uh, the top two in the group, you make it to the World Cup. This time around, there's a quarterfinals. I think that's where... That's where we really have to be careful. We um, hope for the best draws. I mean, there's, there's something about the luck of the draws. Uh, when it goes your way and uh, you give somebody that you feel that you're confident, confident to, to play, just go out there and get the result. At this point, we I think the talking about retaining the trophy is, um, is far-fetched for me. I, that's not the discussion. The, the, what is before us now is to qualify for the World Cup. That means that we have to qualify for the group stage and perhaps win our quarterfinal game. Uh, anything uh, short of that means that this competition is a disaster. And I, I, I hope, I just pray, I hope that uh, it will get to that point. So wishing the girls the very best. Right. Alfred. All right, before we leave the little matter of uh, the Women African Cup of Nations, let's just take a look at what's going to happen tomorrow and on Sunday by way of fixtures. Let's see uh, the matches that will be played. Uh, interesting matches to look forward to. Cameroon will take on Tunisia. Zambia will take on Togo. That's in Group B. It's going to be played tomorrow in Group C, where it really concerns the Super Falcons of Nigeria. Nigeria will be up against Burundi. South Africa, in control of Group C, they will be up against Botswana. So uh, those are the fixtures. When we return next week, we will be able to tell you what happened in all of these matches. All right. So uh, let's leave uh, football for a while. We'll get back to football later on. But let's uh, go on uh, to talk athletics. Uh, when we uh, began the show, we talked about uh, the World Athletics Championship uh, that will uh, be taking place in Oregon, the United States. And uh, of course, the news that hit us today that Nigeria's four by 100 meters women relay team will be competing. They've made the final list. A lot of questions were being asked and of course uh, the simple reason is that uh, of course France has a depleted team and they've been able to, uh, in the absence of France, next best thing they've been able to get into it and it's a team of joy because initially, uh, of course there were fears they wouldn't make that uh, least because of the suspension to blessing or Kagbari. But Alfred, let me just quickly uh, get your thoughts. It's good uh, that, of course, the others not affected by the ban will, will at least reap the reward for their efforts. I think it is a fantastic opportunity for our girls. Uh, I mean, um, we've not had for a long time three ladies running sub-11 for the women. That this is the first time we're having it. It would have been a shame if um, they didn't make it to the World Championship. I mean, it's uh, when, that, when I saw that, when I read that story, I was pleasantly surprised. I mean, it, it's good for the girls from uh, uh, Philly to, to the rest of the girls. Uh, I mean, this is the result of hard work. They've put in the work. They've been consistent. They've uh, shown that. They've shown that. Um, I mean, when you when you go for it, you get the. Uh, it's. Uh, I was talking with um, Darius earlier, and I was like, "This is the best time for women's, you know, for for female sprinters. They've stepped up to the plate. I think um, with the way they, if they can be able to put the battle exchanges there, and they can really put a good run. I'm sure." It can really um, ruffle a bit of um, feathers in, in, in that category. It's good. It's, um, it's our best chance for a medal. I mean, in the relatives, a 4 by 100 for women. And so um, to hear that they will be taking part in this um, gives, me, gives me great joy. Yeah, it gives us great joy. The quartet of Rosemary Chukuma, Toby Amushan, Favor Vili, Grace Wokocha, and Joy Udo Gabriel are the ladies listed for 
uh, the event. Uh, I know Austin has a thing or two to say before we go to uh, the Nigeria Professional Football League uh, in Tennessee Times. But Austin, I mean, yeah. everybody was happy when the news broke. Yeah, indeed, because this team, remember, they have a season's best of 43.25 seconds and the beginning to, to get some understanding as a team when doing the relays. So it was painful that because of what happened with Blessing and Kagbari, that they were being punished. But I'm not celebrating so quick, Yemi and Alfred, because we need to hear from the athletics integrity you need. And we also need to hear from the world athletics. Very, very important. They, yes, we have seen that Nigeria has been cleared. We are now on that list. But they should be able to say why they're putting Nigeria. Because we know that some people will go to the back now and say, you, you said Nigeria will not, will not be part of it. So why are you bringing back Nigeria? You know, So we need to be sure. I don't want to start popping champagne and then they will come out with one because they know how to craft the English so well. And then tell yes. us that, that I, I hope, something might be. Yes. Yeah. I hope. Yeah. I hope. I hope something else doesn't happen, but the explanation given today is, uh, is sufficient enough for me. France has a depleted squad. The time that we have no in, in one of the races Blessing was not involved in makes us qualify. But I understand the question about the athletics integrity you need. I hope there is no uh -huh. clause somewhere, somehow. You know, I, I that's hope... unit. They've got integrity in the middle. <laughs> so they go back. <laughs> and say, wait a minute, what are we doing? Somebody might be in this sort of situation tomorrow, and then they will say, you did this for Nigeria. Why well, can't you do this for us and all of that? So it's good. I want to see these girls at the World Championships in Oregon. They worked so hard for it. I love their, their timing. I love the fact that they are beginning to pick themselves back up with that blessing of Kagbari. So uh, it will be good to see them compete. But let's wait and hear from those guys in the <laughs> AIU. I, mean, I fear them. I All right. Them. There won't be any issues. There won't be any issues. All right, Austin, uh, let's allow you to lead us into the next uh, item for discussion. Nigeria Professional Football League. Of course, we know who, is, who has won. Uh, we know who's taking the second uh, continental uh, ticket. But of course, it's still hotting up in some areas. That's right. We also know teams that have dropped. Uh, fans of MFM still can't understand what happened. And Look, just like yesterday, I remember when we started this league and we're already talking about March Day 37, Rivers United has showed us that they are indeed worthy champions, winning the league title with four games to spare. Let's take a look at uh, March Day 37 fixtures, Aqua United. You guys say I love this club. Uh, they will take on Abia Warriors, Aimba. We will host Dakada Bombay United. We play Alfred's Enugu Rangers. Katsina United will go against Play 2 United. Play 2 United should look at their season and be proud of some of the things that they did, though they would have loved to win the league title. But I think it was still uh, a pretty much decent season for them. Match day 37 of the Nigeria Professional Football League, Para United will take on relegated MFM. Para United also having a decent season. If you want to put it side by side, what it in last season, they've not been so bad. Lobby Star will host Wiki Tories. Nasarawa United will also take on struggling Kano Pillars. I said it last week on this show, you hear me, that Kano Pillars are still living dangerously. If they win this game tomorrow, maybe they might just get to a safe place. Well, now get to Nidu will take on Atlanta. Uh, Alfred, why do I think you're looking forward to the Rangers game? For me, I'm not actually to look forward to the Rangers game. Rangers is not a um, under threat to go down. Uh, I mean, um, the opportunity of um, the third place, they've since lost it. I, I, for me, if you ask me, I'll say uh, Remo Stars are in poor position to, to get a uh, spot. A big but and, and the boys have shown that um, they really wanted it more. Uh, they will play Sunshine Stars. Sunshine Stars only last week, uh, Manadu, the coach, just declared that... Um, there's nothing, not, they are playing for this. There's nothing to play for. They are, they are not threatened by relegations. Even if they um, show that consistency two games to go, they might not just be one of the top three teams in the league. And so that for me is something that I think Remo will profit from. And if they get the point there, like I think they, they can, uh, it means uh, that third place and um, that third place is uh, science still and deliver. That kind of, we I mean, where the action really is, is in the bottom part of the. This is the uh, bottom part of the log. Dakada will play in by international in Aba. Dakada, uh, mathematically, uh, 
They are threatened, yes, but they are not down yet. Who, uh, who says that can, they cannot get um, resolved back to back? They play Imba International. Imba have shown that they can drop points at home. They've, uh, the level of consistency that they showed in the second part of uh, the season was undone by that result they had against Heartland. They just um, took the sale out of um, took the sale, win out of their sale, as, as they say. Uh, and so that is one that is one place I'm looking uh, for for Kano Pillars to survive. They need to get uh, points. They hope not to lose against Nasarawa United, that um, a team that uh, for Nasarawa to save. So you see, when games of people who are desperate for a point play people who are not looking to um, perhaps maybe for them, just thinking of the holidays, you, the results might not be something that you can predict easily. But I, I just for the purpose of the integrity of the game, I expect that every team just put their best effort and uh, play the game. So for, for, for the third place, um, I just think that Remo, Remo Stars is in poor position to get that. So Remo Stars um, giving a good account of themselves. Look, what a season they've had. Binga Ogumbote and the management of the team should be proud. We're also looking at that relegation battle. Uh, yeah, me, uh, uh, before we leave, uh, your darling shooting stars, are they safe? <laughs> uh, my lips are sealed. Um, I, I don't want to say, I'm not good with predictions uh, anyway, so I, I guess I just want to leave it uh, at that. But, I mean, miracles do happen, and uh, uh, <laughs> things, things, things will still go uh, some of the way. Um, <laughs> you see, my tongue is tired. I don't even know what to say. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, remember I told you the last time, you know. You know you have to, you have to, um, should this start host um, uh, Rivers United? I mean, mm -hmm. Rivers have won the And uh, now we will expect that um, and they are preparing for the final game where they will the trophy parade and presentation and everything. So now maybe they'll just send the second 11. So should you just relax, get your three points and um, and and um, you'll be a bit more comfortable. Because um um, what well, I think one or two teams to join, uh, depending on how the result go, we just join um, MFM in that relegation dog fight, or we just wait for the final day for the drama. So that the good thing is that all games will be played on Sunday. So the era of playing on Saturday or Sunday, there are no staggered fixtures. Everything 4 p.m. on Sunday. Hopefully, we will uh, everybody. If you're not at the match venue, I'm sure you'll be looking at your phone. Just cast, especially if your team is threatened by relegation, looking at phones right. and checking up. But uh, teams around teams around you and the rest of them. It will it will be for an interesting weekend. So All right. for those who are not fully internally. <laughs> All right. So I guess we'll leave it at that uh, for now. I mean, this just shows the true position of how it is. And Alfred has helped us out, uh, of course, with the situation uh, reports uh, as at week 36 and what will happen on March day 37. All right. Another big piece of uh, news that broke today uh, is, OK, we have to revert back to uh, the WAFCON, and that's the result on your screen. Uh, Burkina Faso have scored, but Uganda still leads. It's 2-1. Morocco and Senegal, it is still goalless. By the way, both, both teams have qualified. They have six points, and it's just to decide who tops uh, that uh, group. All right, let's move on and talk about uh, embattled Sepp Blatter. I mean... He's not been allowed to rest, even though he was housed from his position in FIFA due to uh, uh, allegations of corruption. But today, Seb Blatter and Michel Platini, the former UEFA president, have been cleared of any wrongdoing by a Swiss court. Uh, of course, there were issues about corruption charges. They've, they've been cleared. And Blatter says he's relieved. Uh, it, this is victory for him victory for football. I mean, we're talking about the so-called 2 million Swiss francs disloyal payment that uh, has been, uh, you know, that has been the case for a while. And But now Swiss prosecutors have said that uh, they have not done anything wrong and they've been cleared of any wrong doing. All right, Alfred Rigoli, we all thank you for your time on the show today. Uh, hopefully we'll do this again next week. The pleasure is mine always.
All right, so that's our friend uh, Alfred Okolibe giving us uh, his thoughts. Uh, also, before we go, I mean, the floor is yours. Your thoughts. Are we going to see some uh, rackets throwing, rackets smashing, uh, tantrums, unkind words for the umpire, um, angry words at the fans? Do, do you think we're going to see stuff like that in the final? Yeah, those emotions will definitely come to play. I mean, it's Nekreos going against uh, Djokovic, first Grand Slam final. And you should listen to what Djokovic said. He said, he, he doesn't have anything to lose, you know? He has, he has reached the final and Nadal gave him an open door, like just go into the final. But it's tricky because Djokovic doesn't really know this player called Nekreos. And he said it. So we're going to have an interesting final, one that can swing anywhere. But you can put it past Djokovic who is going for a fourth consecutive title at Wimbledon and a seventh overall. So he loves the competition. And today, he didn't just beat Cameron Nari, he ended the hopes of a nation. And that's why I want to ask you this before we go. Who do you think the fans would be rooting for? The Royals were at center court, all England club, they were clapping, clapping, there were chants. At some point, you think everybody didn't want Djokovic to win. So Djokovic on one side, Nick Rios on one side. Do you think the fans um, at the All England Club will be neutral or they'll support the champ? I know they love Djokovic. They love Djokovic. They, they think Djokovic makes this competition what it has been in the last you know, seven years. So definitely they will come out. The good thing about our world of sports, even when you don't, you're not openly supporting someone, you applaud a good play. So they will come out and, you know, uh, show some love to whoever gives us good yeah. tennis on Sunday. All right. That's a good place to leave it tonight. I want to thank our viewers for allowing us to be a part of their day. I uh, really appreciate that. We'll be back here again next week to take you on a trip across the money spinning world of sports. From the city of Lagos right here in Nigeria, I'm Yemi Adebayo. Bye-bye now. That's the show. Thanks for doing this with us. Let's do this again next week in London. I'm Austin Okonakwan. In everything you do, remember, let's keep talking sports. Bye for now.